you got all these people who want to, uh, there's all these people who want to create their brand, right? So they want to be a consultant, they want to be a speaker, they want to do whatever it is. So they, they first, they made sure they had this great website and then they had to have the great book because everybody has a book. And then they had to have all this free content that they give out in their newsletter. And then everybody's sending everybody so much content. Nobody wants to read it all. There's, I don't care if it's all the best stuff in the Nobody's world. Reading. I'm not reading it. But I'll, maybe some people are. And I'm always surprised by how many opens Very I get. Very few. For the yeah, amount of people, though. Yeah, but you're expending a lot of energy yeah. in writing a newsletter and getting it out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and not to mention the money for consultants on that to create this. But people aren't reading People will yeah. become attached to certain things if you are compelling as the message. It gets right, back right. to that again. Right, right. And they're going to follow you if they like, like you and, and, and the stuff you send them. It's just trying to send things just for the sake of sending them I don't like. And I see a lot of people no. do that because they overwhelm you. And I noticed that I'll end up on somebody's show and then all of a sudden I'm on their mailing list. Or, and I'm like, how do I get on your mailing list? You were on my show <laughs> or, but you know, or vice versa. If I was on their show, I, I can't imagine why I'm on their mailing list, but people will automatically put you onto their list of things. And, and I don't think, you know, you want, there's all those opt in rules and all that you can opt out. But I think if people really want something, they're going to sign up for it. And I don't think it does you any good to just put somebody on your list just to say, you've got to. Well, people keep sending out these emails and I don't want to do that anymore. It freaked out this assistant who was working for me. Um, she didn't like that people unsubscribed. <gasps> oh my God. I said, well, that's the name of the game. That's what happens. It's just too many things. People can't, it's not personal. They just have 50 million things. I was in a, a office the other day for, I think three hours. I came out, I had 150 emails just from three hours being away from me. <laughs> I can't read that stuff. I mean, no. that's what people have. And you have to recognize that people don't have the time for that. So when you do come up with things, you're going to have it be meaningful. And I think a lot of it are short bites of content. We're doing a lot of that with our uh, videos. Um, yeah. that lead people that if they really want more, they can go to bigger amounts of content. And, and right. You, you want to find out who really wants to listen to your stuff or read your stuff. And that's, I think for a lot of people, they just want to say, I've got this huge mailing list. And because, you know, when you go to write a book, that all they talk about is well, who's your following and how it's, you know, what do you have as far as okay. people that you, you know, sell this book to, right? Yeah, they, before you sell a book, before you make a presentation, uh, people are interested in, who you know and how many people will attend to that so they know whether or not the hiring people know whether or not to invest in you but this is such a skewed um avenue of measurement just just this morning i called uh my doctor to make an appointment and her assistant gets on she said oh, are you the famous Dr. Kilda who talks about relationships? I said, yeah. So then the doctor writes to me, because we have a wonderful relationship. The doctor writes to me and says, oh my God, the young girls in, our, in my office were just so titillated that you are my patient and you're going to be in this office and blah, blah, blah. Now, that will not show up on how many emails I have <laughs> yeah. for for the metrics right right, so right. this is a really skewed it's, yeah, it's kind a really hard thing to measure it's, of it is. measurement it is. people are being judged based upon some numbers now i found it very interesting that instagram was so smart to remove how many likes you got i think it did a lot to contribute to our mental health because everybody's just so measuring themselves against oh my god did did i lose likes did i gain likes what rather than worry about this is my content and this is what i want to deliver to my audience who's out there so i thought that was oh, really yeah. refreshing 
that Instagram took that plunge. None of the others, I think, have done that. Yeah, I was just on Instagram today and I saw that my likes are still there. That's interesting. They did this sporadically in huh. in some markets and then they they're I think it's their objective was, is it well it was to take their objective was to move that into everybody's. But huh. um I, I am sure. a harmful thing, I think, for people. You know, it I, you want <laughs> feedback, but you don't want the, that constant judgment. I, I don't know if maybe it, it wouldn't help hurt you to know your own likes, but if everybody else sees your likes, is it that you don't want other people to know you're not getting many likes, or is it that you know what I mean? <laughs> well, it, we're so I, hard on ourselves, aren't we? It's just ridiculous. I mean, I, who cares? <laughs> no with all the nonsense that's going on in the world today, yes, who cares? Yeah, it's, What's the difference whether I have 14 likes or 17 likes? It's an experiment to find out sometimes if it's for work, you know, what works, what doesn't work. If it's a personal situation, that's a little bit different. But when you're in this, when you're in a consulting arena, when you're a speaker, when you're a CEO, you're trying to get a message out there. Everybody wants it to be successful. So we can't say that, we don't want you to get the numbers because you do want it for marketing purposes. But when it's about your own personal self-satisfaction, that's a whole different story. And so but I know. think, I think that if we take the number of likes that we get and internalize that to the point that, Oh my goodness, I am less of a human being. I am, I am, less capable i am i am less attractive to people blah 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 i think it can hurt your mental oh, yeah that's that's wow. definitely a different ball game when you're talking about from a personal level it's it's really hard and, and we talk about that in a lot of uh, my courses i teach on in marketing you know and and we get into the that self uh, esteem issue in in business and and so it's but i think so there's two different things that we're talking about. We're talking about business messages that get a lot of attention and personal messages. And if you're your personal brand, it's hard to separate those two. Because you know, I am finding it so difficult. This yeah. is one of the my my most difficult things. For example, on one of the platforms, I'm not gonna mention names. <laughs> Don't mention you're not allowed to mention brand names, Bill. <laughs> That's right. On one of the platforms, I have over 5,000 subscribers. And after that number, they cut you off. You have to go into a personal page rather than a professional <laughs> page. And now the personal is mixed up with the professional. It is such a mess. Mm -hmm. And there, I, there is no indication as to what to do when this happens. Well, I could tell you a little bit. You okay. Tell everybody. It's like the other uh, group that we can't mention the name that has lets you get thirty thousand. After you get thirty thousand, then people just follow and they aren't connected where they can communicate as easily through the messaging. But you, they can still follow you. So it's it's a little bit easier on the thirty thousand platform than it is on the five thousand platform because the five thousand platform for people to find you, it's not quite as set up that way. So I, I hear what you're saying. But they're, they're all set up just a little bit differently. I think the one that um, the president uses in other platforms like that are unlimited, but then that's a different style of communicating. So I, I think you have to learn how to work within the bounds of each one of these things. But I think the most important thing of the social media that you have to figure out is where your customers are and where they hang out the most. And that's where you spend your time. So you're gonna have to figure out that. Even that is so difficult. So I write a book. For example, I wrote this one book, Don't Lie on Your Back for a Guy Who Doesn't Have Yours. Right. And the whole thing is about egalitarian relationships mm -hmm. and how you are not even desirous, but uh, entitled to get back some emotional feedback or emotional uh, hugging of some kind if yeah. you are giving out emotional hugging. I mean, it's, it's just that basic. So I, wrote, so I wrote this book, Don't Lie on Your Back for a Guy Who Doesn't Have Yours, specifically with this long involved title that no host could even repeat. And they keep saying, 
Dr. Gilda, would you please repeat that, the title of that book again? Wonderful. Uh, this is my option to uh, say it again. And uh, one of our lessons, the more times you say something in the media, the more times people remember. But, so I wrote this for millennial women. All of a sudden, and I thought that was the audience for this book, all of a sudden, their mothers and fathers are reading this to find out where their daughters are. And young men are reading it to find out where the girls' mindsets are. And yeah. so the audience that I had intended this for suddenly grew like this with no intention of my own. So you get all of these extra people in your audience over and over and over again that you would never have suspected would be in your audience. You know, some of the best ways I've expanded audience is through people that you wouldn't even think of. I uh, met a guy once, I went to a meeting in San Diego and I didn't even go to the meeting. I walked in, I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested in this. And I spent five seconds at this meeting and I went to go see my daughter instead. And while I was waiting for the Uber, this group of guys was sitting there waiting for another meeting. And we just happened to talk because I was waiting for my Uber. Gave him my card. This guy's given me a million people to, to interact with for, you know, on my show. And he happened to be a marketing person. And just talking to somebody randomly. And then, yes, like that, sometimes they just, they're great connectors. You got to find these really great connectors because they know all these different um, people to suggest for you if you're yeah. considering having your own show, if you're trying to build your brand, or if you're trying to, to grow and to be that person for other people. And I don't think that we do enough of that. I think you look for people to give you stuff sometimes, but I, I'll, I'll often go out of my way and go, oh, you know, this, you got it. Have you been on this guy's show after they're on my show? You'd be great on this guy's show or, you know, and I think that's how I get some of my best guests on my show is at the end of the show, I'll say, well, how do you, you know, how, you know, if you have somebody that you know would be really good, who would that be? You know, and then they, they go, oh yeah, by the way, I know this billionaire who really, you know, <laughs> who did this amazing thing and saved all the people in the world. Oh yeah, I'd like to have him on my show, please. You know what I mean? And so you, you, <laughs> you, you, you represent, I don't know if it's a dying breed or it, in, in a world where it's doggy dog and stab each other on the back or in the chest or in, wherever. Uh -huh. And, and, oh my God, if she gets ahead, then I will not. In that kind of mentality, mm -hmm. that is a rare thing. You are so demonstratively uh, sharing and um, generous that way. You can't possibly fail. I mean, you, you represent a role model for people to follow, Diane. Oh, well, I really appreciate that. But you know, I have to say, Gilda, I'm seeing more and more people like that. And I didn't see it for a long time. I'm seeing more and more people who are just like really good connectors or they want to help. And they're, they're, and I keep thinking, you know, what, I'm waiting for them to ask for something and, and I'll ask them once in a while, you know, what can I do for you? Is there something, you know, nope, just like doing this, you know, and, and I get it all the time. I'm going, do you want to be on my show? But, <laughs> but, the, but the secret, but the secret is that you initiated it. And they're learning from you and you are then, we don't attract what we want. We attract who we, we attract who we are. Yeah. And that's one of my Gildagrams. And yeah. that I live by that. Yeah. We don't attract oh. what we want we, or who we want. We attract who we are. So if you are that kind of generous host, then other people who are also generous that way will fall into place right after you.